A couple of weeks ago I finished putting together this giant 3D printed xenomorph from the movie Aliens. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have noticed I'm a pretty big fan of that series. This thing is over 30 inches long, weighs more than a kilogram, which is over an entire spool of standard 3D printing filament, and it took over 100 hours to print out all of the pieces, which there's over 20 of. When I showed off the final results, several of you said that you'd like to see a video with some tips and tricks for chopping up models to be able to scale them up really big and print them out in multiple parts like this. That's what this video is, so let's get started. Now before I get started, at the time of uploading this video, there's still over a week to enter the 100,000 subscriber giveaway. There are several different prizes and a few ways to enter, so I'll link to that below or you can check out my previous video. So the actual process of taking a model and splitting it into two or more pieces is actually pretty simple. I'll show you that in just a minute. But there are a few things that you need to keep in mind if you want to avoid wasting a bunch of filament for one thing, and if you want to get the best possible results in the end. Now if you've been 3D printing for a while, then most of this probably isn't new to you. But I remember when I was first getting into the hobby, it took some time and some practice to learn to work within the limitations of 3D printing and to plan my projects around those. So let me jump over to the computer and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so like I said, the actual process of slicing a model into two or more pieces is actually really simple and you can use several different tools for it. The most popular one by far that I see people using and what I recommend is called Mesh Mixer. If you've been into 3D printing for a while, then you've probably heard of it or even used it, but if not, you're missing out. It's super handy, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. So let me just drag one of the pieces of this model into here. Let's take one of the arms. So once I scale this thing up, it is not gonna fit onto my printer bed. So I need to cut it into two or more pieces. And the way that you do that, really simple, you just select the model, hit edit, plane cut, and then it gives you this plane that you can move around and rotate to get the exact cut that you want. Now, if you just go into here and start slicing it up without really thinking about it, you're not gonna get a very good result in the end. So the first thing that you need to think about is how visible the seam will be at the location that you're chopping it in half. So for example, if I cut this right here in the middle of the arm, there's gonna be a seam right in the middle of what is otherwise a big smooth surface. Sometimes that's unavoidable. I had to slice it in the middle of the head, for example. But in this case, in the arm, a much better place to slice it would be up here towards the wrist where there are already all these kind of creases and sharp edges that'll help hide that seam. So once you figure out where you wanna cut it, uh, just go up here to cut type and select slice so it keeps both halves of the model and hit accept. It's still one model, it's just cut in half now. So the next step that you need to do is hit separate shells and that's what'll actually give you two halves of the model that you can export and print. But in addition to deciding where you want to slice it, you need to look at the angle that you're gonna cut it at. So imagine if I did cut it like that and I was left with this. If I print this with the flat part on the build plate, which is what you'd normally wanna do, you're gonna end up with support structures all underneath the hand here. Uh, it'll print like that, it'll work just fine, uh, but you're gonna have to print all those support structures so that'll take extra time in plastic and then you'll have to remove them, which usually leaves some markings on the underside of the model there after you're done printing it. Cool, thanks mesh mixer. So in addition to picking where you want to make your cut, you need to also think about what angle you're going to cut it at. Just a few degrees of rotation can shave off hours of print time because you don't have to worry about support material and your model will come out looking nicer as well. So instead of just cutting it flat like I did before, if I cut it like this, and I print it flat against the bed like this, uh, I can print it probably without any support material at all. That'll save me a bunch of time and plastic and it'll look nicer in the end as well. So the third thing that you need to keep in mind when you're deciding where and at what angle to make your cuts is how much stress it's going to be under at that location. For example, on the alien model that I have hanging on the wall, the arms aren't under any pressure at all. They're just kind of sitting there and they only need to support their own weight. The body on the other hand though, I had to cut this about in the middle which meant that the whole bottom half of the print, the bottom half of the torso, the two legs, and the tail are all going to be weighing on this joint right here between the top and the bottom halves. So in situations like that where you have just a big flat surface stuck together with some glue, it's a good idea to add some structural reinforcement between those two parts. So let's go ahead and make this cut here. We'll hide the top half for now. And so now what we're gonna do so that we don't have just a flat surface connecting the two things, we're gonna add some holes on both sides of the model and some pegs that'll create some physical joints 
that'll go together and make it much stronger when we add some glue. So doing that within Mesh Mixer is super simple. You just go to Mesh Mix, grab the cylinder, or you could also use a box if you wanted to, drag it onto the surface that you want to add it on, and that's it. It automatically orients itself on the surface that you dragged it to. So we can move it around and scale it. You can just kind of eyeball it there. And it would, in this situation, I'd probably put one here, here, and maybe even here as well. Uh, make sure that you have create new object selected and hit accept. And so now we've got our peg and the bottom half, but we're not quite done yet. So select the peg, go to edit, and hit duplicate twice. So now we have three copies of that peg. We're gonna hide the first two copies of it, select the bottom half of the model, hold shift and click the peg, and now we have the option to select Boolean difference. And now we've got a nice clean hole exactly the size of that peg. So now we're gonna hide the bottom half, show the top half, and then show another one of those pegs as well and do the same thing here. So we've got the top half of the body selected, hold shift and click the peg and hit Boolean difference and that'll make a hole on the other side of the model. These small peg holes should print fine by the way without any supports. You can just use bridging on that top layer there. So now we've got that third copy of the peg that fits right there within that hole and that will interlock between the two parts of the model. So if you add a few of those, it'll be a much, much stronger connection once you add that glue. So there's another trick within Mesh Mixer that I wanna show you. Uh, let me bring the body in here fresh again. Okay, so let's say that you wanted to cut a model for some reason right here. So let me show you what happens if I cut it right here. If I do that and then I hit separate shells, I've got several different models now because it sliced it right there and created a new shell right there on the bottom side of both of these spines in addition to the bottom half of the body. That's not what I wanted. I just wanted to chop off the bottom half of the body. So what you can do is go to select and that'll let you select stuff using a brush. You can select uh, specific portions of the model. You can adjust the size of the brush if you wanna get really fine detail and select just certain polygons. Uh, what we can do is we can select just the portions that we want it to cut. So we can just kind of paint around here just on the part of the body that I wanna be able to cut. After we've kind of painted a line around there, then we can go to the edit menu up here and then hit plane cut. So that will create a plane cut, but only take into account the polygons that you had selected. So I can cut it right up here and it has only cut there on the body where I actually wanted to make that slice. So yeah, that's a super helpful tip. You'll find yourself using that a lot if you're slicing up models like this. And then to export a part, all that you do is select it, go up to file and then hit export. And you can save it as an STL file that you can load up into your slicer. After you get everything sliced up and exported, it's time to print it out. Only real tip that I have here is to make sure that you use the same settings for every piece of your print. This isn't so important if you're planning on sanding it and painting it, but in my case, I just wanted the whole model to look nice and uniform in terms of its shininess and layer height. And I kind of goofed up in a couple of spots because I printed some pieces at a lower temperature, which with PLA means that it'll come out with a more matte finish. I didn't feel like reprinting it, so I may paint it at some point, uh, but yeah, yeah, that's one thing that I wish I had done differently, so just make sure that you use the same settings on all of the pieces. Now for gluing it together, you may be tempted to use super glue. I know that I've used it before and in some cases it works just fine. But for stuff like this where you've got big flat surfaces that you're trying to stick together, especially with PLA, it just doesn't hold very well. So instead of super glue or crazy glue or whatever that's based on the same kind of formula, this stuff works much, much better. It's a two-part epoxy from JB Weld. It's called JB Quick. You just mix a one-to-one -one ratio of them together and you're gonna have to work quick because one of the things that I like about this is how fast it sets. There's not a very long working time at all, like maybe five minutes max. So mix it together, apply a thin layer of it, stick them together. You can even hold them together for like 30 seconds and it'll hold pretty well at that point. Really nice for sticking parts like this together. This was my first experience with it and I'll be using it all the time for stuff like this in the future.
future. Another type of glue that I like to use in some cases is this crystal clear Gorilla Glue. It's sort of like really tough silicone when it dries and it has a much longer working time. It's also quite a bit easier to spread it out on stuff so it was much easier to use for the tail when I was inserting that part. And that's about it. I hope this was helpful. Like I say, this was one of the bigger projects that I've done like this. Certainly the biggest in terms of the number of parts that I had to put together. Couple, all right guys, well that's all I've got for this one. If you have any tips or tricks for printing big things like this in multiple parts, drop them in the comments below or check out our Discord server where we have a channel just for 3D printing. Huge thanks to those of you who have already jumped on as supporters for the Patreon page that I set up recently. Uh, you'll see their names at the end of the video, and if you're looking for a way to support the channel, then check out the link in the description. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time.